Just a quick reminder before we get into the lesson to download the hands-on lab exercises that accompany this complete CCNA course. I'll include the link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you don't miss any of the lessons in the course. Okay, let's get into it. In this lecture, you'll learn how to configure access control lists with a lab demo. So here's a lab. I've got it open in GNS3 here, and I've got a couple of routers, R1 and R2. I've got PC1 and PC2 are in the 10.0.1 subnet, and PC3 is in 10.0.2.0 24. I've already configured the routing. So if I console on to PC1 and let's try pinging R2 at 10.0.0.2. So ping 10.0.0.2 from PC1 works okay. I know for sure it's going to work from PC2 as well because it's in the same subnet, but let's just do it anyway. So ping 10.0.0.2 from here as well. And let's check that everything's okay from our 10.0.2 subnet as well. So I'll ping 10.0.0.2, which is R2 from there as well. Okay, so connectivity is all working just fine. Actually, let's have a look at the routing table on R1. So I'll jump on there, I'll do a show IP route and try to do it without a typo. And I've just got my connected and local routes on there. And because R2 is also on the 10.0.0 network at 10.0.0.2, that's why I've got connectivity everywhere. Okay, looking back at the topology diagram, and the scenario is that we are the network administrator and we've been given some security tasks to secure the network. So the first scenario is that PCs in the 10.0.2 network should not have any connectivity to R2 at 10.0.0.2, but the, the PCs in the 10.0.1 subnet, they should have connectivity to R2. And also PC3 in 10.0.2 still should have connectivity to 10.0.1 as well. So usually when we configure an ACL to do security, we'll secure it as close to the source as possible so that traffic isn't going over any part of the network that it doesn't need to. But if we look at the scenario here, let's see that we've been given a task that we have to configure a standard numbered access list to do that, and it has to be on R1. So we could do it inbound on fast ethernet two slash zero at the bottom here. With a, a standard ACL, you can only specify the source address. To be able to specify source and destination that it's going to, that needs to be an extended or a named extended ACL. So what we want to do is we want to block traffic from 10.0.2 to R2, but we need to allow traffic from 10.0.2 to 10.0.1. So we can't put the ACL inbound on that fast 2 slash 0 interface on R1, because if we blocked traffic from 10.0.2, We'd be blocking it going to R2, but we'd be blocking it to the 10.0.1 subnet as well. So the only way that we can do this task using a numbered standard ACL is by putting it on that outside fast 0 slash 0 interface on R2. So if that's not clear yet, let's do it and then you'll see what I mean. So we want to block traffic from 10.0.2 allow traffic from 10.0.1. So let's go on to the command line on R1. I'll go to global config and I'll make this access list one and I'm going to deny traffic from the 10.0.2.0 subnet. The wildcard mask is 0.0.0.255 because it's a slash 20 
and it's a standard ACL, I can tell, because it's number one. So I can only specify the source address. So that's all that I need to put in here. Now, in all of your access lists, there's always an implicit deny any any at the bottom of the list. But I need to allow traffic from the 10.0.1 network. So for that, I'm going to do access list. This is also list one. And I'm going to permit 10.0.1.0 and 0.0.0.255 again. And that's all that I need to do. And well, apart from actually applying the access list, of course. So to do that, let's look at the topology diagram again. And I'm going to do it on the outside interface fast zero slash zero. So back on the command line, I go to interface fast zero slash zero. And the command now is IP access group. It was group one. And I'm doing it in the direction towards R2, so that is in the outbound direction. Looking at the topology diagram again, if I wanted to control traffic going from the 10.0.2 network to R2, I could either do it inbound on fast 2 slash 0 as it comes into R1, or I can do it outbound on fast 0 slash 0 as it goes out of R1 on its way to R2. But like we said earlier, you can't do that in this particular scenario because if I blocked traffic coming from 10.0.2.0 coming in on fast 2 slash 0, it wouldn't just stop it getting it to R2, it would stop it getting to the 10.0.1 network as well. And I need to allow that. So that's my whole config. Let's just have a look at it again. So I denied traffic from 10.0.2. I permitted traffic from 10.0.1 and I applied that outbound on the fast 0 slash 0 interface. So let's check that it is working. So let's go on to PC1 first and check that PC1 still has connectivity to the router. So I'll ping 10.0.0.2 and that is all good. PC1 has, so I know that PC2 does as well. PC3 should not have connectivity to 10.0.0.2. So let's check that. Ping 10.0.0.2. And there we go. The ping fails. So my access list is working. But it should have connectivity to the PCs in the other subnet. So I'll ping PC1 at 10.0.1.10. And that is successful. So that is the first task completed. We used a numbered standard ACL to block traffic from the 10.0.2 subnet to R2 at 10.0.0.2, but allow all of our other traffic everywhere else. Okay, so that was a numbered standard ACL. Next up, let's have a look at a numbered extended ACL. And if I go back to the topology again, the scenario this time is going to be, we're going to permit Telnet from PC1 to R2. Let's say that PC1 is our administrator workstation. And Telnet is a way that you can remotely get onto the command line on a router. We'll cover it in more detail in a later section. So we're going to allow it from PC1, but PC1 is the only administrator workstation. So no other PC, no other subnet is allowed to Telnet onto R2. So let's configure that. So I'll go on to the command line on R1 again. And in my ACL, I'm going to do an extended ACL, which allows traffic from 10.0.1.10 to 10.0.0.2 when it's telnet traffic, but denies it from everywhere else and is going to allow all other traffic. So let's go on to R1 to configure this. So uh, let's go down a few lines. I'll say access list, and it's an extended ACL this time. So that starts with 100. I'll use that for my number. And I'm going to permit traffic from host 10.0.1.10. But I'm going to specify it's telnet traffic. So I need to say that this is TCP. So I permit TCP, and I'm going to say from host 10.0.1.10. And it's going to host R2 at 10.0.0.2. And then equals the port is Telnet. 
I could also have said equals 23, the router would take that command as well. So I'm allowing it from PC1. I don't want to allow it from any other PC in that subnet. So I'll say access list 100, and I'm going to deny TCP from the 10.0.1.0.0.0.255 subnet going to host 10.0.0.2 equals telnet. And you can see it's important I get these in the right way. If I'd put that second command in first, I'd be blocking traffic from all hosts on the 10.0.1 subnet, including PC1. So I need to make my more specific commands up at the top of the ACL. And then I want to allow all other traffic. I'm just controlling telnet here. So I need to also say access list 100 permit IP any any to allow all other traffic and that overrides the implicit deny any any at the bottom of the ACL. The implicit deny any any is still down there at the bottom, but the router reads the permit IP any any first. So this is going to allow all traffic apart from what I explicitly denied. Okay, so that's my ACL configured. And importantly, we need to remember to apply it at the interface. It's really easy to forget to do this. So looking at the topology diagram, and it's always best practice to secure as close to the source as you can. So here, we could put the ACL either inbound on this interface on the outside here, which is fast zero slash one, fast one slash zero, sorry, on the router. Actually, let me make a note just to make that clear. So I'll say this is fast one slash zero. And that is the interface that we're going to put this on. Let me try to clear that up a bit. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so we're going to put it on fast one slash zero. Let me just clear that up a bit. I'm making a mess of my topology diagram here. Okay, so it's going to go inbound there. I could also have put it outbound on fast zero slash zero, but I've already got an ACL configured on there, the ACL that I did earlier, my standard numbered. You can only have one ACL per interface per direction. So I'm going to put it on fast one slash zero. So back on R1, I go interface fast one slash zero, and it's IP access group 100, and it's in this time because it's coming in fast one slash zero, going out fast zero slash zero. Okay, so that is my ACL configured. Let's test it next. So if I go on to PC1, I should be able to telnet to 10.0.0.2. Telnet's already been configured, and there you go. I can see it's working because I'm getting the password prompt. So I'm able to telnet onto R2 from PC1. I should not be able to get on there from PC2. So let's check that. I go into PC2 and I'll telnet to 10.0.0.2. And there we go, destination unreachable. That's good, it's because my ACL was blocking the traffic. But it should just be telnet traffic. I should be able to ping 10.0.0.2 and that's working, so that is all good. Actually, looking back at the topology diagram again, I didn't need to specify anything about PC3 because I already had my first ACL blocking traffic going out to R2 from it, so it was getting blocked already. Okay, so that was a numbered standard and a numbered extended I'll do a named ACL in the next lecture because I feel like this one's gone on for a little while now. So go get yourself a cup of coffee if you want to. I'll see you back here for named ACLs. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to get the complete course ad free right now, then you can enroll in my CCNA Gold Bootcamp by clicking the link above my head or in the description. It also includes full study notes, quizzes, and 150 pages of additional troubleshooting labs you can't find anywhere else.